more just ugly soft data about the U.S. economy today. And those soft sentiment numbers do correspond and correlate and fit very closely with key hard data statistics. There is recession in all of them. Call it recession light. But what recession light is missing is only the one thing, and that is the layoffs. We have a shallow recession. We just don't have widespread job cuts. Now, there's a hiring freeze, and hours are being scaled back, and people can sense that the labor market, and even the economy overall, isn't good. But if we're in a recession-type situation and everything else but job cuts, why don't we have those job cuts? Now, one reason is labor hoarding, but it's not the only one, and it may not be the biggest reason. Maybe more important than that is the silent depression itself. And when you see the numbers surrounding that and how it has impacted the labor market and what that means, you'll just be, you'll be just astonished as I am. We can have a harsh economic climate without the layoffs, and that raises a couple questions. If we're in a recession light already and it has been, it has it feels this difficult as it is. What would it look like if we do end up getting the layoffs? And what would it take for companies to be pushed that far? Those are the questions that we're going to try to answer today. And again, the statistics on the labor market and the silent depression will just knock your socks off. But before we get to all that, I do want to remind you that Eurodollar University is having its spring sale. Got tremendous deals on everything. If you ever wondered what the Eurodollar University membership has to offer or Eurodollar University's daily briefing, we're giving you the first month for free. If you sign up now, first month is on us. You can cancel anytime. No risk to you. We've also got special deals on annual rates for both the memberships and the daily briefing, as well as tremendous bundle deals for the deep dive analysis, the daily briefing, the memberships, all of them together. Lots of sale prices. Check it out at our website, eurodollar.university. Spring sale, limited time only. Well, the first thing we have to do, we've been talking about this recession light thing on a day when U.S. GDP was just upgraded in the fourth quarter a little bit. And GDP suggests that the U.S. economy ended last year on a tremendous upswing. So let's establish this recession light that I'm talking about. Let's look at some of the soft survey data and make some comparisons. And then we'll talk about this labor stuff, the more important stuff as, as it relates to the silent depression, layoffs and everything else. The statistics we got today start out with the Chicago Business Barometer from the ISM. That one fell to 41.4 in March, unexpectedly it was supposed to rebound. Instead, it's the lowest since last May. There had been somewhat of a rebound consistent with GDP in the second part of last year, but really this year it has been heading the other way. And that's kind of the theme that we're gonna keep coming back to. A lot of the sentiment statistics show 2024 did not get started on a, on a very good foot here. Chicago Business Barometer is one of them. In particular, new orders down, but they also mention one of the things that we keep coming back to, backlogs contracted by 11.4 points, which is an enormous, enormously negative sign because again, companies that have no new orders coming in are gonna work through their old orders. And when their old orders are done, they have to take a hard look at their, bus at their business profile, their costs, and of course, their labor. In addition to the Chicago Business Barometer, there was another one just yesterday or the day before, I believe, from Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Fed's Services or Non-Manufacturing PMI. That one plunged to minus 18.3 in March from minus 8.8 in February. And that minus 18.3 was the second lowest of the cycle, only behind, just barely behind April of 2023. And again, that one has turned lower after a positive number in the PMI back in December, another one that suggests the U.S. economy did not uh, start 2024 in the right direction. Uh, also from the Federal Reserve, this time the Kansas City branch in manufacturing. Its manufacturing PMI came in at minus seven for March from minus four in February. New orders though fall, falling dramatically to minus 17. But with the Kansas City, we've got now the average of the five manufacturing surveys for the Federal Reserve, the regionals. The PMI came out at minus 10, the average of all five, that's for March, from minus 3.5 in February. And it had been minus 21 back in January with a huge stumble in New York. But essentially, what all these PMIs are saying is that 
recession light, the shallow recession in the United States economy continues. And it's not just manufacturing, it's not just inventories, it's not just goods, it's also the services side. As I mentioned in the introduction here, we can correlate these soft survey numbers with hard data statistics, such as, for example, industrial production. You take a look at the Federal Reserve's industrial production, especially for manufacturing, and it fits very well with either the Fed regional surveys or the ISM Chicago Business Barometer. And it isn't just this latest cycle where we see the shallow downturn, the shallow recession angle, the recession light. We also go back to previous recessions, the last couple of recessions, um, the statistics for the Fed regional surveys don't go back all that far in all five of them. A couple of them go back quite a ways, but in the 2008 recession, the Great Recession, quote unquote, you see a pretty good correspondence there, though um, industrial production or factory orders, which is another one, those continue to expand at a relatively robust rate in the first half of the Great Recession. But you could see that there was trouble coming in the soft data that eventually showed up in the hard data too. Another really good example that looks a lot like what we're facing today, that's the 2001.com recession. If you line up the Fed regional surveys or the Chicago business barometer with either industrial production and manufacturing or factory orders, they do line up really well. So they do correspond with hard data numbers and you can actually correspond those hard data numbers with other statistics like GDP or GDI as the case may be. So the soft data is corroborated historically with hard data numbers. And if we're seeing all of these negatives in the soft data, that is consistent with a recession type situation, or in this case, recession light. What's missing is only the labor market stumble, the big one. And we can see that in some quantitative ways. If you look at something like the Chicago Fed's National Activity Index, what we see out of that is that over the last year, the, the overall National Activity Index has been modestly negative, around minus 0.1 to minus 0.2 on average, where minus 0.4 in the Chicago Fed National Activity Index is consistent with recession. So it isn't quite getting there. It is consistent with all of this other soft data and hard data suggesting a downturn or a recession light, but the Chicago Fed NAI is only about halfway to that recession level. And the reason is because it's missing the labor stuff. If you look at just the employment, unemployment, and hours components, those are just barely negative. In fact, they've been around zero since the early part of last year, and it was only up around October that they got a couple basis points negative. We're talking about just minus 0.4 on average or minus 0.3 over the last four months in the index. So what that suggests is that the labor market is just kind of hanging in there, but we should note too that the labor market data that the Chicago Fed National Activity Index uses is mostly from the establishment survey, which raises a couple issues about, are we seeing as we're seeing a problem in the data itself? Would it, would it make a huge difference if we used household survey stats like the unemployment rate even, or full-time jobs and some of, the, some of those other numbers on the other side of the ledger? But even so, the labor, what we do know is that the labor market isn't what we would expect in a full-blown recession. We know we have the hiring freeze. We know we have hours being cut, but we don't have the massive, massive, massive amounts of layoffs that we would normally associate with. Even the household survey doesn't show that just yet. So the Chicago Fed's National Activity Index, its labor statistics are maybe representative of the underlying situation as far as it goes with job cuts. We're missing the job cuts. Everything else is lined up, including the Chicago Fed's index overall, we're just missing that one part. So we asked the question from the beginning, where are, what's, what's happening here? And the first part of the answer is of course, labor hoarding. After the experience of the last couple of years, businesses brought in workers, they are loath to let go of them. They wanna hang on to them until the last possible second. It, as, as we continue along in the recession, light shallow recession downward trajectory, they still want to hang on to their workers convinced 
that everything is going to work out just fine. That once the rate cuts start now, the, the new narrative, once the rate cuts start, then the economy will pick up and then they'll be rewarded for hanging on to their workers. That's part of it. That explains part of it. But it doesn't explain all of it. And we have to go back further in history to really show you exactly what I mean here. We'll use some statistics like the establishment survey because why not? I mean, it's the mainstream one that everyone uses and it demonstrates exactly what we're talking about here really well. We have to remember how business cycles used to work before 2008. I know it's a long time ago and we've kind of forgotten how a booming economy actually performs, especially when it comes to labor market. When the economy goes from recession to recovery, businesses in the past would bring on tons of new workers because they're optimistic about the future. Just bring in workers, we'll sort it out because we're definitely gonna need them because everything just turned robust. And so they would bring on new workers, hopeful and optimistic about the future. And as the recovery built into a sustained expansion, they would continue to bring in new workers all the time because they're optimistic about the future. Let's make sure we have enough people working for us so that we can take advantage of all the opportunities that are out in front of us. But something changed. And it changed around 2000 and it got even worse after 2008. Suddenly, we don't see that, that part, that, that key part of the recovery. Businesses no longer bring in a ton of new workers in the initial stage of recovery. You see it in the statistics. We look at the establishment survey here, just the year over year changes. And you can see again, in the, in the business cycles in the past, companies would bring in tons of workers after the recession. You see a surge. In, uh, in hiring and expansion and labor market utilization in hours, as we'll see in just a minute, because businesses were optimistic in recovery. They bring in a lot of people, they bring a lot of people back and they bring in a lot new, more new people on. And they keep doing that during these recession cycles. It began to change a little bit in the early 1990s after the 1990-91 SNL recession, where the peak hiring in the initial recovery stage wasn't as robust as it had been in the past, for a couple of reasons, but then again, the contraction in labor wasn't as deep as it had been in other, uh, other recessions too. But you can really see here, the, the recovery after the double dip in the 1980s, the expansion got to be nearly 6% year over year in private payrolls, huge increase in labor market because businesses are optimistic. Whereas in the 1990-91, after that, the recovery there, just 4%. But then look what happens in the 2000s. In 2001, you've got a, a, you got a somewhat bigger downturn in the recession in terms of the labor market, but then a, a much, much weaker recovery afterward. That was a combination of things, including Ross Perot's giant sucking sound. But then look at 2008. 2008, we had an enormous, absolutely astonishing contraction in labor market numbers, whether it be the establishment survey or hours worked, huge contraction in, during the recession, but then a recovery that only got as good or as, as much as the 2001, the aftermath of the 2001 cycle. Now, that wasn't the giant sucking sound. That was the monetary crisis. Businesses were at first quite afraid to bring on new workers because they didn't want to, they wouldn't want to be saddled with the cost and liquidity needs that come with bringing in new employees. So they were ultra careful in bringing back workers who had been laid off. And that was completely different to how recessions had been in the past. You could see it literally in the data here, completely different response to the recession after 2008 and 2001. And the, the difference is that kept going. It wasn't, just, it wasn't just the immediate recovery period. After 2009 and 2010 and 2011, especially the setback we talked about in yesterday's video in 2011, which did hit the U.S. economy, businesses continued to overmanage their cost and not prioritize optimism and opportunity. Unlike in, in recoveries past, they weren't bringing in tons of new workers because they were optimistic about the future. They were more concerned about bringing in too many workers for their current needs. The lack of optimism permeates not just the labor market, but this entire silent depression. And the repeated euro dollar cycles are one reason that reinforced that message. 
Now we can see this even better in terms of the number of hours worked. This is another BLS statistic. This is the quarterly, quarterly numbers. And it looks just a lot like the establishment survey numbers do too. When you look at it year over year basis, you see that there's a big change in the 21st century. Huge decline in 2008 because of the liquidity, monetary crisis and everything. And then the lackluster lack of recovery afterward. Businesses are looking at their cost structure. They're overmanaging their costs. They're not bringing in workers in the same way they used to in the past. And when you look at the hours index itself, that really shows you exactly what I mean here. Going back to 2000, the number of hours all the way up until the, to the last quarter, which is the fourth quarter of 2023, total hours increased a total of 10.4%. At the same time, the civilian non-institutional population increased 26%. What that shows is that companies are not they're, not, they're not working. They're not expanding their businesses, at least domestically, in the way that they had in the past. Now, economists have brought up several reasons for this. One is demographics. And you can see the baby boomer generation and its, and its effect on the labor market in these numbers. And you would expect there would be some slowdown as the baby boomers aged into the 21st century. But that doesn't come close to explaining the degree, the absolute paradigm shift in the labor market that began in 2001 and 2002, and then was really hardened and cemented after 2008 and the monetary crisis. That's not demographics. And economists, of course, have blamed other workers in other forms too. They say we're too lazy, we're too drug addicted, we won't go back to school, all those types of things. None of those explain what we see here. It has to come down to business behavior about labor. That's what's changed. In recessions, in recoveries of the past, after recessions, they were optimistic about the future. They, they brought in tons of workers, which meant that when they were faced with the next recession, they had lots of spare workers that if, the, if business didn't live up to expectations, they started to lay them off immediately. As soon as the business downturn or after a transition period, they would, they would engage in job cuts because there was lots of workers that they didn't actually need for current business, current, current business needs. In this silent depression era, however, there aren't many or any spare workers for companies to just lay off. Business might turn lower. We might have a shallow recession like we're experiencing now, but there aren't a, a, a ton of spare workers for them to just let go as they would have in say 1990 or the 1980s, 1970s. And it's even worse in the 2020, post 2020 environment. I talked about this in a video a couple of days ago. Look at the baseline of full-time jobs. There are barely any more full-time jobs in February, 2024 than there were in December of 2019. What that shows is that again, despite all the rhetoric about the great resignation and labor shortage and everything else, businesses are still over managing their cost structure, less optimistic about the future, less likely to just bring on workers in the way they used to in the past. So they don't have a huge reservoir. They don't have a huge inventory or excess inventory of labor. So of course they're gonna hang on to them because in many ways they can't really get rid of them. They're running bare bones operations as it is. So the layoff instinct is much, much less in this silent depression condition than it was in the more optimistic booming times, which meant much, much wider swings in the cycle. Okay, so, I mean, it's not just the data from today. We've got tons of statistics that suggest the U.S. is in a, a, a recession type of environment, a recession light environment. Soft data matches hard data, and a lot of hard data is corroborated by other hard data and other, other information like markets corroborating the same thing. So we've got recession light, and we've got, we've got more corroboration of it in the labor market too. Hiring freeze, hours being cut, but just not the layoffs. And we don't see the layoffs because one, labor hoarding, and labor hoarding that has been amplified and emphasized because of the silent depression era which means that companies are running bare bones operations. They don't have a whole lot of spare workers that they can easily just get rid of. They aren't optimistic about the future and haven't been optimistic about the future, so they haven't been hiring that way. So they don't have the need to fire, at least not yet, which only leaves us with one big question. 
We've gotten into this recession and been stuck in this recession all along. And that's what the data today tells us. We're still in the same shallow recession like downturn without the job cuts. What happens if they do start cutting because they don't have a choice? That's the big, the big downside risk in the economy, not just the United States, but around other parts of the world too. And that explains in part why there's so much angst in the labor market as well as the downward bias in interest rates. Not about central banks. It's about the possibility that this, this, down, this recession light might become recession full. I mentioned the full-time job statistics and they're eye-opening too. I talked about them in terms of what stage in the supply shock cycle we might actually be and how that relates to this recession light stuff. That's the video link below. Check out Eurodown University Spring Sale. If you are a member and subscriber, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And until next time, everyone take care.